Obviously, many of us in digital marketing are concerned about our future in the world of AI. And that comes down to SEO, starting new sites, starting new potential businesses. So how can we maximize our upside whilst minimizing downside risk? Generally, I do like to be positive about these kinds of developments. I always tell people these kinds of technologies have always been scary. People are worried about losing jobs. It's very standard. And generally, over time, things work out for the better. We're able to use the tools to our advantage and there's new opportunities created. But I fully get that with the current AI explosion, things the pace has certainly sped up and things are looking a little bit scary. And SEO is a bit of a minefield where no one really knows what's going to happen. Generally, I don't think the search is going to change massively. I think even if we have like a Gemini-based generative search, that's still basically an index. It's only a small iteration on the way Google works currently. And why would Google work any differently, having already put a huge amount of effort into its ranking algorithm? Algorithm. That ranking algorithm might be formatted differently, but Google's had a really successful formula of basically assessing content and backlinks borrowed from academic publishing in terms of how many times to get reference. Why would that change if we're into a generative search model? So I'm not massively concerned there, but I think it's fair to say that the old SEO principle of starting a niche website or a content website is purely based on information, where you're simply taking a question from Google and answering it with a page of text and then hoping people click on affiliate links or banners, then I think that model is certainly under threat. But of course, there's plenty of industries that are just not going to go away. One example of that is hairdressers, which might be ironic in my case, but the fact is not only is hairdressing something that's going to be very difficult to actually replace with AI, let's not forget that business tends to work a whole variety of different ways in terms of what do people really value. When someone goes to the hairdresser, they're not just looking to get a haircut because they could potentially just get a basic cut done at home. It's much more of that experience, having the right person for the job, getting a good haircut, but also having that conversation, that idea that your hairdresser basically becomes like your therapist or confidant. So there's loads of professions out there where not only is a computer very unlikely to replace it, but it's quite difficult to see how that could feasibly happen within a reasonable time frame. So in my case, I am a marketer, therefore quite high on the risk level for replacement. I used to run content websites, but now I'm not so interested in doing content-based websites anymore, whereas I see huge opportunity with local businesses. I've made no secret on my channel of the fact that I'm basically looking to buy up local businesses that currently haven't had any marketing done to them on the basis I could take that existing engine that's based on word of mouth business cards and maybe a billboard here and there and then totally smash it with all my digital marketing expertise but even before buying could I potentially just build one myself for this method I'm going to show you how you can potentially find local business opportunities that you can build right now so for that you basically just want to put a location into Ahrefs preferably a location where you have some sort of presence so you could potentially verify a Google business listing. So in my case, I'm not far away from Enfield in North London. So that's a nice, easy one. And we want to view all in the terms match filter. And then from here, I generally like to look at the CPC column most because of course, loads of big search terms here, like what's the weather Enfield? So they have very low CPC, whereas service businesses tend to have a higher CPC. So first I'm going to put a minimum volume of 100. I think below 100 probably isn't a feasible business. So we shall show those results and then sort by piece. And and then from this, if I just zoom in so you can see that, not interested in the local furniture village. Tools like Ahrefs, they always have these quirks where they might put a really high CPC for a particular keyword. It is just a machine, so it can get it wrong. Europa car, don't care. Storage in Enfield, that's a bit more interesting. So that is a potential avenue. Could you basically buy a warehouse and use it as a self-storage facility? In fact, we've got loads of examples of self-storage, so that's a really good one. But even then for me, that's a little bit complex because we do actually have to buy a warehouse, supervise it and deal with all that. Something like removals is much more interesting because what is a removal business? It's some reasonably strong men with a van. So there's no specialist equipment. If I go back to this SO outline I've been creating, we do not want specialist knowledge and we do not want specialist equipment. And ideally we want it to be highly trainable. So removals and fields, really good opportunity between 100 and 450 per month and you tell me how you can easily replace a removal company it's just one of those jobs where someone has got to do it and the fact is not only if you did it yourself would you have to lift all your own stuff but are you really going to go and hire a van and deal with all of that it's one of those jobs that just makes sense to outsource to people who just do it day in day out know what they're doing so removals and fields really good example plumbers on the other hand that's not a no but we are getting into the more highly skilled end of the spectrum here so a plumber obviously requires quite a lot of qualification now of course there's plenty of examples out there of basically becoming a market maker, local tradesmen like plumbers. In the UK, we have a company, Pimlico Plumbers. I've forgotten the name of the founder, but he's a really interesting guy, Charlie Mullins. 
with a great mullet sold in 2021. But exactly as you can imagine, it's basically about having a fleet of plumbers in vans on the road and they'll get more business that way by going through this company rather than setting up on their own and then having to try and stay busy that way. Much better to be part of this company, get a guaranteed amount of work and accept that the company is going to take a percentage on top. And we can see here in 2021, Mullen sold a 90% shareholding of Pimlico Plumbers to US Home Services Group Neighbourly in a deal worth between $125 million and $145 million. So local plumbers do not underestimate that power. But there's a reason I'm not going for those kinds of opportunities, because as soon as you get into those kinds of specialisms, then the, the trust factor goes up a lot. But you're really partnering up with those plumbers because they could always go elsewhere and set up on their own. I've definitely had plenty of examples where you call through an aggregator or a lead generation company and they say they'll send someone round. That person comes around, gives you the quote, and basically immediately does a deal directly with you rather than going through the person who actually generated that lead. So that is the downside with lead generation. There are so many ways to circumvent that. If you provide the value by generating the leads, you can quite easily be cut out. Whereas if you start off with a couple of plumbers, then unfortunately the power is more with them than you. That's not a very equitable arrangement, so I wouldn't really recommend that. Pest control, pretty high value, but again, we're getting into quite high levels of training and equipment re required. The other thing with equipment is, of course, you have to store it. Roofers, I really don't think I'm starting a roofing company. Man and van, again, like removals, that could be a good one, just a little side hustle for you. I don't think it would necessarily be a particularly scalable business. But now here's the, the best bit. One of the best niches for this kind of work does tend to be cleaners. So if you think about it, there's not a huge amount of equipment required, and you can certainly train your cleaners to be better cleaners, but it's not like they've got to create complete some sort of diploma in order to do it. So quite often someone who's looking to be a cleaner just needs to make ends meet and they're willing to put in the work for a fair wage and it's one of the first things that we all like to outsource so you can see plenty of volume here so next up having decided on that i want to go about getting the domain the other interesting thing about this which i also include in the essay is we then actually want to search for profession jobs to see if we can hire staff. The problem with going with something like plumbers, electricians, it's very tempting and I'm sure people have done it very successfully. But my personal issue with it is most of these people are basically independent contractors and therefore you'll basically always be this middleman. So what we want to do is to see what these people are actually Googling to get jobs to see if we can basically employ people directly rather than being like a referral business. So if I just search cleaning jobs in Enfield, you can certainly have a look at the Google jobs pack there as well to see if companies are hiring for those roles. Another good one is locksmiths. I'd love to have a, a locksmith firm. But again, I think it's a higher barrier to entry than simply getting some cleaners on board. So we've got Indeed at number one here. If I look at the keywords, then we can see cleaning jobs, Enfield, 100 searches a month, and another one for cleaning jobs in Enfield. So 200 searches per month, literally looking for the kind of work I'm proposing to offer them. So just out of curiosity, let's see if we can do the same for plumbing jobs in Enfield and find out if I'm wrong. So plumbing jobs in Enfield, you can see that so if we look at the two keywords, do they have volume? Yep, so they're not jobs. It's people looking for plumbers, not plumbers looking for work. I don't think it's so much of a problem in the US, but certainly in the UK, most tradesmen have actually got plenty of work. They don't seem to have the same need for leads. But with Cleaning Jobs Enfield, we can literally be a market maker here where we can basically rank pages for book your cleaner in Enfield, but also get a cleaning job in Enfield. And we've become that perfect middleman where both sides actually rely on us. I've seen this done very successfully before with the psychic reading niche, where these websites rank for tarot readings online, psychic readings online. But at the bottom, they'll also rank pages for how to become a tarot reader or how to sell tarot readings online. So therefore they're using SEO to both get supply and demand. So cleaning in Enfield pretty much fulfills my formula of what I'd like to try. And the great thing is it's a very simple website with just a few pages. And because there's no equipment, not really any capital outlay, it's also very scalable. We could totally expand this beyond just this locality. So now we need a domain name. And generally I'll just go through, if I take the most popular search term, 200 searches a month, and I want to see if the .co.uk is available. The top level domain, so the .co.uk, .com, whatever, does have a massive influence on rankings, but generally if you are trying to rank in a specific location, then ideally you do want that country code. So I definitely want a .co.uk for my local business. So we'll see if this is available. And actually it is. I'm always shocked by the number of local exact match domains that seem to be available. So we can add that to cart. Let's just go back and look at some of the other options. 
because I think the singular cleaner was available as well. And yes, it is. And before we go any further, let's just validate this choice slightly more. So here's the methodology I like to use. If we look at the main keyword, we can go down to the search results and work out roughly how much traffic the top results are getting. So not just from this keyword, but all the other keywords as well. So we can see there's 14 variations on cleaners Enfield, delivering a total traffic of 146. Now we have the local map pack at the top and we can almost certainly get on there because we can actually verify the Google business profile but I always like to try and verify this kind of demand just on the basis of the organic because for one thing we've got more concrete numbers whereas we don't for the local pack and also the local pack is its whole separate ranking strategy and generally it's not competitive we can normally get on there very easily but I like to take let's take the worst case scenario what if I can only get on page one how much traffic can I realistically expect without using the map pack. So we can see there's a DR of nine here at number eight. That sounds quite far down, but they do have a very low DR. You see 14 and 10. I generally get my clients up to that kind of DR very quickly. But even then, they're getting between 40 and 70 visitors per month. Ahrefs does tend to underestimate. So I think that should safely be around 50 to 100 visitors per month. So if we just take the 70 of this one, let's assume we can only convert 10% of those, which is again, conservative, but I think it's good to be careful. So let's say we can get seven cleaning gigs per month. So average cost, probably somewhere between 50 and 100 pounds per clean. So let's go with seven times 75. So it's not great, but we're looking at £500 per month, and that's before costs. But don't forget, this is accumulating, but it's quite unlikely someone's only going to get a cleaner once. It's much more likely they're going to want it weekly, maybe even multiple times a week, then stick with them for a number of months. So those are all unknowns to us currently. So this is currently a 10% conversion rate, assuming we only rank it number eight, assuming only 10% of those site visitors actually buy. And this is assuming they only book one clean, which costs 75 pounds. So more than likely it's going to be once a week. So if we take that 525 times by four, then we're getting into much more sustainable numbers. And I've done this all with generally skeptical estimates. If we just increase the traffic, if we increase that conversion rate, then this scales very nicely. Now, the whole point of this model is we're not putting out any outlays at this stage until we're getting a reasonable volume of inquiries. So at this stage, I just want to put AI content on a domain, get that page ranking with some cheap link building. And then if it looks like we're getting a sustainable volume of leads and inquiries, we'll include a form that includes how long the clean should be and how regularly that clean should be which will also give us an idea of the customer value. Once we've got all those, then we can take the, the next step of actually hiring people to go out and fulfill that demand. So we're doing pretty much everything at a zero cost basis. We're not really going to spend more than a couple of hundred dollars until we've got more than a couple of thousand dollars coming in. So let's be a bit more positive now. Let's assume we can get 15 leads a month and each of those is 100 pounds a week. And then we take that 1500 and times it by four. We're looking at 6,000 per month. So 6,000 pounds a month, that's much more appealing as a potential business. And again, we factor in retention. Generally, people do hold on to their cleaners. It's not the kind of thing you want to reverse on and go back to doing it yourself. Even if they're not happy with that cleaner, then you can always help out and simply provide them with a new cleaner from your workforce. So now that I've bought and confirmed the domain name, I'm going to be using Easy Blog Networks to set it up. This is technically a PBN host, but they just make it really easy for that reason to deploy sites at scale. So very easy to set up here, and it will then give us the name servers where we can basically point that domain name at this particular hosting. Now again, the whole point of this is we only want a small website, so I don't think we need that much memory. We're going to go for a random theme for now, I think, because I'll probably find either more of a local business theme or basically build my own with Elementor. And this is why I like Easy Blog Networks. It includes things like the free SSL, removes the annoying Hello World posts and sample page from the default WordPress installation. And at this stage, I don't think we need any of the additional plugins, but we can add them later. So this is now deploying. Once it's finished deploying, we'll have the name service, which we can then add in Namecheat to send the domain to the right place. 